former President George W. Bush, war criminal, was interviewed on CBS News, and during this interview, he called for compassion. I repeat, war criminal George W. Bush called for compassion in America. Take a look. You ran as a compassionate conservative. I did. Do you believe there are compassionate conservatives today? Absolutely, I'm one. And I think there are a lot. Uh, the problem is uh, w with an angry society, uh, it, it, it's hard to punch through with compassion. Mm -hmm. Is it an angry society or is it a certain leaders and people who've stoked that anger and fear? I think there's a, that's an interesting question. Uh, I'm a big leadership guy, and, and so therefore I, I think maybe, <laughs> maybe the latter part of your question is true, that people stoke anger in order to advance their apolitical agenda. Uh, I do believe there is a more, uh, well, my dad spoke kinder and gentler, uh, and he truly believed it, and I believed in uh, unifier, not divider, and, and, and they just can't be empty slogans. You have to believe it in order to be credible. Uh, I think uh, that, yes, it's going to require leadership to help heal, heal wounds. That is rich coming from him. And let me just say, shame on the interviewer there. Because when you're interviewing George W. Bush, if you're even going to platform him at all, which I don't think anyone should be doing, but if you're going to interview George W. Bush, there's only two questions you should ever ask him. One, when can we expect you to turn yourself into international authorities to be tried for crimes against humanity? And two, how do you look yourself in the mirror knowing that you are responsible for catastrophic losses to human life? That's the only two things anyone should ever ask of this criminal who should be in prison for the rest of his life. Now, it's funny, she says, uh, you ran as a compassionate conservative. Did he though? A compassionate conservative? Would you call it compassionate to base your entire 2004 campaign on introducing a constitutional amendment to ban same-sex marriages? Do you call that compassion to make sure that gay people in America never have the opportunity, even in their state, to get marriage equality? I mean, thankfully he lost that battle, but do you call that compassionate? I don't call that compassionate. Someone who wanted to kick people off of welfare, partially privatized Social Security for Wall Street, is that compassion? It's shocking that a reporter had the audacity to say this, but uh, he responds and says that he believes that there are still compassionate conservatives and he believes that he is a compassionate conservative. That's hilarious, uh, but he adds, the problem is with an angry society. It's hard to punch through with compassion because everyone in America, they're just so mad right now. We're all at each other's throats. Why is that George W. Bush? Is it because the economic ideology of elites, capitalism has absolutely decimated the population and the planet, and we all feel as if we're marching towards climate catastrophe and an apocalypse. Meanwhile, we're all miserable. People are starving. Homelessness is on the rise in America. I mean, why is it that we're angry? Well, according to him, his theory is that people are angry because we don't have someone who's a unifier or a divider. His dad, he claims, was a unifier. Uh, his dad, by the way, uh, groped numerous women. Doesn't sound like a unifier to me. Sounds like an actual terrible human being. Also, he says they can't be empty slogans. So when politicians speak the rhetoric of unifiers, you have to believe it in order to be credible. So when you're espousing these types of platitudes, it's not actually going to work. It's not actually going to resonate with the American population unless you really believe it to your core. That's what's going to uh, you know, foster the spread of compassion in America. You wanna know what might bring Americans together, George Bush, is if we saw you arrested, if we saw you in handcuffs, serving time behind bars with your buddy Barack Obama, with your buddy Donald Trump for committing crimes against humanity. It's just, it, it's interesting to me. It, it's so rich that he has criticisms for American society. If there are issues with American society, and there are many, one of them is that you have freedom right now. You shouldn't have freedom. You should be behind bars. But the media has gone out of their way to normalize and rehabilitate George W. Bush because Donald Trump is so bad that he makes someone like George W. Bush even seem sane. But you never normalize someone who committed atrocities to the extent that George W. Bush did.
George W. Bush is a mass murderer and a war criminal. And again, any journalist who interviews him should never chum it up with him. Never ask him softball questions. The only two questions you ask him is when will you turn yourself in and how do you live with yourself? That's it. And I'm not being hyperbolic. I literally think that should be the only two questions that you ask. Because what else do we need to hear from this individual? This is a monster. Who cares what he has to say about American society and policy? I couldn't care less. All I care about when it comes to Bush-related news is that he's going to be in prison. The fact that he's not speaks to the moral depravity of our society.